Hello. A few people asked me how I made this animation, so today I want to show you. I'll walk you through the steps of creating kind of a simplified version of it, so you can afterwards just change and add as much as you want to turn it into your own creation. Some creativity and all these different kinds of jellyfish open up pretty much endless possibilities. So, let's get started by creating the model. First of all, we add a UV sphere. The number of segments depends on the number of tentacles you want. I will go with 36, which will give me 18 tentacles. Then we go into edit mode and select the bottom part of the sphere and scale it to a negative value and move it up to create this kind of bell shape. Something like this. I will also scale it up along X and Y. It's now gonna look a bit flat, but that's gonna change in the animation process. What you could do now is select the bottom faces, then just check a deselect and extrude them out to create the tentacles. But I think there's a much more elegant and much more practical way, especially when your model is more complex than this one, and that's using an array. For that, we delete everything except for two segments, which is one repeating part. After that, we add the array modifier and we change it from relative offset to object offset and create an object. It can be just a plain axis. Name it accordingly. Probably our jellyfish as well. There we go. And now we can rotate it. In my case that's 20 degrees because 360 degrees for one circle divided by 18 is 20. Now just select the object and adjust the count. Now you should get something looking like this. Now when you enable smooth shading you will see it's kind of segmented. To fix that we have to enable merge and that leaves us with one last seam and to get rid of this one we have to enable first and last copy. Now it's all smooth. When we now extrude just one of the bottom faces down, we get all the tentacles. Just extrude it out, scale it down, and then extrude it out a lot more, as long as you want, basically. Then we have to add a few loop cuts to get enough geometry for the animation. And what also helps is bringing the tips to the center. For that we can use proportional editing with the 3D cursor for our pivot. That also narrows down the tentacles towards the tips, which makes it look a lot more natural. Now we can just add a sub D modifier, increase the level, and it should look something like this. So we're done with the modeling. Let's animate the bell before we later move on to the tentacles. You could do that in a bunch of different ways, but I think for these kinds of very simple animations, shape keys are a really good option. For shape key animation, we have to create two keys. The first one, the basis, is just your unchanged geometry. And then the second one is for the actual animation. 
I will call it diameter. With our shape key selected, we can then go into edit mode. We can now select a few faces here on the outside and scale them down along X and Y with proportional editing enabled. To something like this. And now when we go out of edit mode and change the value of our key, we can see what it's going to look like when it's animated. You can see there's still something missing and that's why we create another key. We name this one Height. With our new key selected, we go back into edit mode, select the center faces and move them up. Then just move faces around a bit until you are happy with the shape. Next we have to actually animate the values of our two shape keys. To have our jellyfish morph between this shape and this shape. To start animating we go to frame 0 and create a keyframe for both values. Then a bit later I will go with 40 frames. We create more keyframes but this time with the value 1. And then the same amount of frames later back to 0, create keyframes again. Let's switch to the graph editor so we can actually see what our animation looks like. Of course we want our animation to loop, so we add the cycles modifier to both animations. When you now press play, you can see that our jellyfish starts moving, but it doesn't really look quite right yet. It's more of a back and forth motion and not really a cycling motion. And we can change that by selecting all the keyframes of the height key and moving them a few frames to the left. And now when we look at the animation again, we see it's a lot more fluid, a lot more organic. Now is also a good time to decide on the speed of the animation. It probably depends on the exact species of our jellyfish and what it's up to. Maybe the uh, ocean currents or something. I don't know, I'm no expert. But I do know that the smaller jellyfish typically move a lot faster than the bigger ones. So the animation speed is a great tool to convey a sense of scale. Once you're happy with your bell animation, we can move on to the tentacles. We go into the physics tab and enable cloth. Now when you press play, you can see it's really slow and that's because of our subdivision modifier that adds a lot of geometry. Once we move the subdivision below the simulation, so it happens afterwards, the simulation is a lot faster. So I think we should do that. Of course we don't want the whole jellyfish to just fall down. So to fix that we create a vertex group called pin and then assign all of the vertices that are part of the bell. So these will not be simulated. 
And then back in the physics tab, we scroll down to shape, open that up and select our pin group. When you now hit play, you can see that the jellyfish doesn't just fall down anymore and the tentacles kind of follow our shape key animation. To make the tentacles float in the water, we create a force field turbulence and change the strength to something like 5000, which is going to look pretty extreme now. But when we go back into our jellies physics tab and change the speed multiplier to something like 0.1, it's starting to look really floaty. If your jellyfish is supposed to just chill in the water, that's all you need for the tentacle animation. But if it's going to actually swim, we need to add another force field, a wind. That represents the water that the jellyfish moves by moving its bell. We then set the strength to minus 2000, the noise amount to 5 and the wind factor to 0.1. The negative value will make the wind blow in the opposite direction, which is down. Next we will animate the strength of the wind. To figure out the optimal start point, we select our jellyfish and then move to the frame where the shape key for the height is at its maximum value. On that frame we now create a keyframe for the strength. And then 40 frames later. We create another keyframe, this time with a positive value. I will use 1000. And then finally at the end of the cycle, another shape key with minus 2000. Of course this is supposed to loop as well, so we add the cycles modifier. And now when you press play, you can see the tentacles start moving up and down as if they are reacting to the bell animation. When we zoom in a bit and look closely, we can see two minor problems. For example, here you can see two tentacles intersecting. That's not necessarily a big deal, depending on your scene, but of course it's not ideal. To fix that, we scroll down in the physics tab to collisions and enable self-collisions. And since there are no other objects, we can also disable object collisions. Now, the other problem is that the tentacles get kind of deflated. You can see it here, for example. That one's not necessarily a big problem either but we can fix that by adding a little bit of pressure. Something like 10 should work. Let's play the animation again and see if everything is fixed. Yeah, looks good so far. You can see sometimes the tentacles get kind of tangled up, which is something that happens in real life too, so that's a cool little detail. Now we can bake our simulation. For that we scroll down to cache and change our simulation start to something like minus 150. That way the simulation starts way before the visible frames, so we don't see the beginning of the simulation, but instead get a nice looking animation right from the start. Now you can just press bake. That shouldn't take too long unless you made your model way more complex than mine. Mine is really simple, so it bakes pretty quickly. When the baking is done, see if you like the result. If you don't, you can just go back, change some values and rebake until you do. I think that looks good. Then we will texture our scene. Before making the jellyfish material, let's just make a very quick ocean environment. For that we just add a sunlight, rotate it a bit, increase the strength, 
and then create a word material. There we change the background color to a very dark blue. And then add a volume scatter. We lower the density to something like 0.1, increase the anisotropy and change the color to blue. This time the blue can be a bit lighter. Now it starts looking like an underwater scene. We also get some really nice guard rays. Next we create our jellyfish material. Probably one of the most important aspects is the transparency. Now the physically accurate way of doing that would be using transmission, but I don't think that we really need that because jellyfish are just bags of water swimming in water, unless your jellyfish likes to travel a lot or something. So there isn't a lot of refraction. Therefore we can simply use alpha transparency instead. In Eevee we have to enable alpha transparency so that it actually works. For that we go into the material tab, scroll down to settings and then change the blend mode from opaque to alpha hashed. Now we can actually make our jellyfish transparent. To emulate a little bit of refraction we can use a Fresnel node and remap the values with a color ramp. If you want your jellyfish to be emissive, you can also connect that to the emission strength. Since the rest of the material depends a lot on the specific look that you want, I will just fast forward the rest of the process and then show you the complete node tree. I decided to create some stripes with a wave texture and also some little dots with a Voronoi texture. You can now just copy this setup or create your own. You might have a lot of stuff planned that you're going to add to your scene, but I will keep it simple. I will just add some cameras, enable depth of field, animate the cameras maybe a little bit and then just render it. Also a little bit of post-processing, but that's it. So I hope this was helpful. If you make something using this tutorial, let me see the results and have fun. Here's my video.